Monohaloalkanes, also known as alkyl halides, are substituted alkanes in which one of the hydrogen atoms is replaced with a halogen atom. They contain only one halogen atom and are saturated, meaning that they only have single sigma bonds between the carbon atoms. They can be classified as primary, secondary or tertiary according to the number of alkyl groups attached to the carbon atom containing the halogen atom. A primary monohaloalkane, such as 1-chlorobutane, uh, will always have the halogen, in this case chlorine, in position 1. The definition of a primary monohaloalkane is that the carbon which contains the halogen atom is bonded to one other carbon atom or one other alkyl group. So for a secondary monohaloalkane, such as 2-chlorobutane, the carbon which contains the halogen is bonded to two other carbon atoms, or two alkyl groups. The halogen is never in position 1. And if we look at the tertiary monohaloalkane, the definition for this is that the carbon which contains the halogen is bonded to three other carbon atoms, or three alkyl groups. We can see that the chlorine, which is the halogen in this case, will never be in position one, and there are three carbon atoms surrounding the carbon which contains that halogen. So what I've done here is I've taken each of those primary, secondary and tertiary haloalkanes, and I've put them into the tetrahedral format so that we can see the central carbon atom in the center of the tetrahedral structure, and we can also see the chlorine, which is our halogen attached. I have replaced the full structural formula for each of the alkyl groups for the letter R. And if we imagine that this R group, R group, which is our alkyl or carbon group, um, attached to the central carbon atom as a bouncer, this will help us identify if the molecule will be easy to attack. If we look at a primary, it's only got one R group, so one bouncer. Secondary has got two R groups, so two bouncers. And the tertiary has three R groups and three bouncers. Now, if you were to be protected, would you prefer to have one bouncer or three bouncers surrounding you? This tells us that the more bouncers you have, the more R groups or the alkyl groups that are surrounding the carbon centre, which contains the halogen, makes it more difficult to attack as there's more bouncers or more alkyl groups. So what we have to be able to do now is we have to be able to identify which of these primary, secondary or tertiary would be the most stable and the least stable carbocation. Now, when we do nucleophilic substitutions, which we're going to look at in the next video, the chlorine or the halogen, any group seven element, is a good leaving group and it chooses to leave to allow another element or molecule to attach on to the central, central carbon and that is known as a substitution. However, we have a carbocation intermediate and the primary carbocation is going to be the least stable carbocation as it only has one R group or one bouncer attached. It's only protected by one bouncer. And the tertiary carbocation produced in the nucleophilic substitution would be the most stable carbocation. And that's because it's got three R groups or three bouncers, which means it's going to be much more protected and therefore more stable. This past paper question is from the Advanced Higher 2007 Multiple Choice 33. Which of the following is the formula for a tertiary halogen alkane? So that's a haloalkane. What we have to do for this is we have to know the definition. A tertiary haloalkane, the carbon which contains the halogen, is bonded to three other carbon atoms. What I would suggest is to then draw each of these molecules out. And what we can see is A is our tertiary monohaloalkane as the carbon which contains the halogen is bonded to three other carbon atoms. This past paper question is from the Advanced Higher 2012 Multiple Choice 25. Which of the following molecules is likely to produce the most stable carbocation intermediate in a substitution reaction? So the first thing that we want to do is we want to draw each of these structures out into the full structural formula. We want to identify the central carbon atom which contains the halogen and remember the more R groups, more alkyl groups, the more carbon groups, the more bouncers that surround that carbon, the more stable it's going to be. So the correct answer to this is multiple choice answer B.